Well, it hasn't been good. Uh, when I say that, I mean uh, here on the uh, campus of the University of Fort Hare, um, there's a, a big to-do. We're celebrating our centenary, 100 years of uh, existence for the University of Fort Hare at, uh, in the Eastern Cape here in the Republic of South Africa. Anyway, the students had an issue, the students had an issue. I had to do with bursaries and then uh, they're not getting their, their allowances for food, etc., etc. So the SRC and them had a, had a, um, uh, they were presenting their demands on Tuesday uh, to the university. Um, and they presented, presented demands, you know, of course they wanted action right away. Interesting enough, uh, I was up, happened to be up uh, in the area and the vice chancellor made this comment that, that they're wasting my time. Ooh, I heard this myself. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, so obviously the, the, the people, the administration met and uh, that Tuesday night, or that Tuesday afternoon, late afternoon, and they, I guess they get out word and they were acceding to the demands of the students. So there was a, um, some action that night, Tuesday night, and then there was some action on Wednesday night. Now Wednesday, that's when uh, the uh, forces came into the university and uh, there was a lot of uh, well, rubber bullets and tear gas. One of my associates, friends, uh, colleagues, colleague, uh, uh, fellow artists, Poor, I featured that uh, we were featured in a thing called the Autochthonous Sessions, which I put a link here about that. I also did a poem the last time we did an audio drama just a few weeks ago for the international students, a thing called uh, uh, White Washers Has a Long Neck. Um, he was a musician in that, and, and as part of that program, he actually did a poem. So let me try to post that poem also, even though it's in Tulsa, it's in Easy Tulsa, so, uh, but I'll try to get a translation sometime much later, but I'll post, post it up now. Anyway, he was a part of this thing too, uh, about the students, the student demonstrating, and he got hit in the face with a tear gas canister. I am told um, he was rushed to a Victoria Hospital. And they did some stitching, and then they sent him to East London to a hospital in East London. Um, so his jaw was jaws all messed up. He had to have stitches. Um, now remember, he's a singer, a poet, a musician, father, husband, and. Uh, it, in my estimation, just to make it clear, you know, he shouldn't have been out there. Once you have a child, you don't get into demonstrations, you know. In fact, if he's, since he's an artist, since he's a poet, since he's a singer, his demonstration should be about song, about art, about poetry, you know. So in a, in a, in a strange sense, I'm not, uh, well, I'm saying that he, he shouldn't have been there. That's all I'm trying to say in that situation. Uh, uh, there are other ways that us artists, us uh, people who, who do what we do, can, uh, can express ourselves more effectively, actually, than most people who, um, like minors, who, who don't have any other recourse but to, uh, to demonstrate and do and burn and whatever have you. Anyway, I, I actually I think that even the students, and I've said this uh, for the last two years that we had these upheavals, uh, are that if you're on campus, you're supposed to be a scholar, so you're supposed to be using your scholarship to point out you know, the injustices that, that, that that's, that's being faced. I'll give you a perfect example. And there's a, I mean, uh, there's dignitaries from all over the world coming, all over Africa coming. Um, uh, the keynote speaker is a uh, uh, is a uh, Robert Mugabe from Zimbabwe. So it's a big thing. In fact, the whole um, affair was taken out of the hands of the University of Fort Hare and taken and put into the hands of the presidency of South Africa. Okay, so they're running. It's, it's almost like the presidency is now renting the uh, the, the college. You see, so. Anyway, the students, uh, when all this stuff happened, the students, there were these tents that were erected for overflow crowds or whatever have you. The students tore those tents down, but immediately it's put back up. Any damage was put back up. So the question the students are now going to have is, well, if you can do that that quickly, then how come you can't feed us? Think about that. Um, my solution to the whole thing, and I'll just end it here, my solution to the whole thing is this. This should be, especially in this kind of situation, if, if, if we can spend this, uh, some might say millions, some people say billions of rands for this, for this one day affair uh, and all the logistics it takes to do that. If you have the money to do that, then why not call a debt jubilee for University of Fort Hare? I would say a debt jubilee for all uh, uh, higher education people, but let's just say with University of Fort Hare. When I say debt jubilee, I mean past debt from students who graduated 
your debt's wiped out. You now can start afresh. You understand what debt's about. Don't get into debt anymore. The students that are currently on campus, wiped, you know, you don't have to pay for anything. We, we, your food, everything is going to be paid for like that for the rest of the world. Well, the semester's almost over, but for next year, since we're in our centenary year. I mean, to think like that, rather than to repress people, is, is um, it's a humane way. It's, it's what uh, Mengelus Rappasapuke would say, is a human, the humanity of Africa will be there. We, are, we shouldn't be acting uh, like, uh, like these other countries who repress folks, like these other continents who repress folks. So anyway, I'm just really actually, so I'm, I'm upset, so I, I, let me just stop here. This is <sighs> T from the Patterson's Technical Trench to Tibet, letting you know what I definitely suspect.